There are two factors that almost guarantee success in business, being passionate about what you're doing and providing a service that helps other people achieve their goals. I'm Vanessa Marks from Stakeholder Podcasting, and today I'm fortunate to have three of my own stakeholders who are both passionate about their business and they're providing a fantastic, valuable service to the communities out there. So welcome to Chepa Khapani and Tabocha and Tamani from Youth Money Circle, Standwa Nongwazi from Easy Equities, and Gavin Kennedy of Solid Gold Podcasts. Hi, guys. Hi, thanks, Vanessa. Hello, hello. hello Vanessa. Hi, thanks for having us. Well, everyone, it's great to have you on this podcast, as I think all of you have fantastic businesses in that you're all, in a way, disruptive. So let's just take a start with you, Tsepo. The business that you're running is called uh, Easy Does It, which is a podcast that is linked with Easy Equities. Tell us a little bit about this podcast. How is it helping people out there and how did it come about? Yeah, so the idea was we wanted to create a space where we could encourage young people, ordinary South Africans, to build a relationship with their finances, but stripping away the jargon, the complications that FSPs and banks love to use. And Easy Equities is one such organization who speak to the ordinary person, you know, try to get people to invest, to save, to build a relationship with their finances. That's part of their business. And so I wanted to create a space that could do that. And, uh, you know, Easy Equities was the right partner to do that. I come from a space of commercial radio, so podcasting was a natural fit for me. You know, I listened to the existing podcast, very bland, very boring, very all over the place. Normally, it's very old white men trying to talk to a normal South African about finances using a, a language you don't understand. Um, and we needed to create a space for the ordinary person. Um, and uh, we did that with an extraordinary organization um, like Easy Equities. And so, you know, I proposed this podcast to them. I set out what I'd like the podcast to be like. I wanted it to be a space for people to learn. But I also wanted the organization to make the podcast part of its ecosystem. So I wanted the podcast to be part of the business of Easy Equities. And I think later on, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of, of what I mean by that. So, Stanway, when you were approached by Tsepo on uh, putting this podcast together, what was your and your organization's initial reaction and expectations? Well, what happened was we were really keen on exploring like a new avenue to sort of take out our brand. And we had worked with Tsepo and Youth Money Circle a couple of times, actually, over the years. And so we had a lot of trust in him and what he can deliver. I mean, that was out of the way. The trust element already was sorted. And so... For us, it was more about not just business goals, but community and sort of culture shifting goals. And it sort of aligned with that. And so we just decided, actually, let's just do this because we had, you know, played with the idea of doing podcasts. We tried it ourselves. We just didn't have the time. And then we wanted to sponsor a few. And, you know, the formula just wasn't there. And so when Tepa proposed it to us, it was just like, oh, actually, yeah, let's just do this. And it's just been flying for us. So we were really happy to just go on board with it. How long has the podcast been going on for and how many series or sessions have you had? Yeah, so the podcast launched on the 29th of April. We've launched with about 30 episodes so far. So it's been an interesting journey. So as we are putting the podcast together and being agile and improving the podcast, the listeners going on their own journey with money, which is very, very interesting. So as we're figuring out the podcast, making it sound really great, the listeners going on their own journey. So 30 episodes in, lots of, lots of work. I'm the voice of the podcast, but the likes of Standwa, of Debojo, they are really the brains in terms of driving the podcast. And there's so much work that goes into it. I think people think you sit in your bed room you've got your microphone you just talk for an hour and that's it but geez there's so much work that we put into the podcast and Seppo is actually just being really humble I don't know why but he <laughs> he's also it's not just that he's at the front of everything and the voice of it he's also there in the back and and sort of directing things as well so he's just being humble there so just don't mind him about that <laughs> <laughs> well talking about being humble one of the things that I have heard is that this podcast has achieved great success for both parties, both for Easy Equities and for Easy Does It. I think, Standwa, let me ask you if you're able to share with us some of the numbers that may have come through since you started this podcast. Have you been able to measure if it's done any, you know, exceeded your expectations? 
and has it increased uh, listenership, registrations, and so on? So I think Tsepo can speak to listenership, but in terms of our own audience and what we wanted to accomplish as the business, it did exceed expectations. So we measured it according to how many people hadn't necessarily gone on to, you know, do what we wanted them to do as a business, so which is fund their account and start investing. And so what we did was we specifically targeted and we still continue to target people who aren't necessarily engaged with the markets and are not like investing. So we literally take that subset and, and we, we hit them with the podcast and we take the numbers and we base our success metrics on that. That's how we measure our success. And, and we've, we've gotten about 50, so just over 52,000 people that we managed to convert through the podcast. So it's been a huge success. It's a big number for us. 52,000 conversions, people who opened accounts or funded accounts. What's the, the definition of a conversion? So we actually have two definitions. So the one definition is, you know, people who open an account and haven't done anything. And then it's people who would have funded their account, but also hadn't gone on to invest. And so we essentially impacted overall 52,000 people. Yeah. And, and I think from a, you know, just from a listener point of view, one of the important things that we needed to figure out is why aren't people funding their accounts? What are the issues? And then create episodes around that. So one of the things was a fear of money, a fear of investing. And we literally had a wealth psychologist there talking to people about the fear of investing. And then that links back to our marketing because now we need to create marketing around that. And I think Debuchu will also touch on that. So from a listener point of view, we've been very listener centric, listening to what the listener says. So within these 30 episodes, we've had close to 70,000 downloads, a big cohort of our listenership are the people we want to speak to, which is young people, 18 to 35, 60% of them are our listeners across the various uh, sites, whether it's Google, whether it's Apple, whether it's Spotify. So a great mix of people, but the core of it are young people. And I think it's because of the language of it. And it's because of the marketing um, aspect of it, which we can also uh, touch on. Look, those numbers are very impressive from both sides. You know, your accounts that you've signed up and, and your followers. Tabojo, can you give us some idea of the marketing? Because a lot of people that are out there that do their own podcasting or that are on social media, one of their biggest challenges is how do I get my podcast known? How are you guys getting your podcast known? I think it all boils down to understanding what the business needs are from both aspects. Um once you understand what Easy Equities wants from a, a, a business needs aspect at what Youth Money Circle wants to achieve, it's then finding a common ground between how can we get both businesses together into one room who share the shared vision and the shared values to drive a very distinct and desirable need that will drive or even trigger a, a consumer's passion point. And I think as part of our marketing strategy, the first thing that we had to think about was what are the South African market trends from a podcast aspect? What we had realized is that looking at data from 2018 is that there was a big shift in terms of the consumer's media consumption habits, right? And then COVID hit and then we saw a major rapid shift between what was mainstream media versus where the consumers were starting to adapt and listen to, 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 to different media platforms from. So what we understood was that podcast is becoming increasingly growing platform that is becoming very accessible, that is a very distinct platform and one that could stand out for the brand. And what brands need to do as part of acting and culture is that brands need to have a voice and the podcast is that, is that one piece or tool that can drive that message for the consumers and land that message. And for you to engage with the audience, you need to create a podcast that is meaningful, that speaks to the consumer's head and heart, and one that will amplify the brand's or, ac or echo the brand's purpose. And part of that was for us to identify what that brand echo or the brand story is and then drive that in a meaningful and powerful way that will really get the consumers engaged into the podcast. Well, your marketing efforts have certainly proven to be very successful. Gavin, this is your space. You are in the forefront of what's happening in podcasting. Would you agree with what Tabocho just said? Do you think that podcasting and not just podcasting for entertainment and education, but for businesses. Where is that space going? What's happening globally is that the spoken word is the fastest growing medium. Uh, of all media around the world, 
spoken word is outstripping everybody in growth. The word podcast is used interchangeably, meaning a lot of things. Some people mean sitting with two friends in their bedroom with a camera and putting a video up on YouTube and call it a podcast. So there's a lot of confusion around what a podcast really is. There's a technical definition. There's Essentially, it's content produced by people that aren't part of a media network. I think that's probably the most useful definition. In other words, it's not made by a CNN or it's not made by a BBC or an SABC. Um, you know, if SABC puts out a podcast, it's really a recording of a show that was already broadcast. Podcasts are made with the intention of being distributed broadly using technology as opposed to using a network. And it might sound like a laborious definition. But what that means is that somebody else is in control for a change. The content is in control rather than the network being in control. And that's a really, really significant shift. Up until now, you would have to convince your networks that you've got a program people want to hear. Can they let you please put it on their channel to reach their audience? With podcasting, you make the content and then the audience finds your content and shares it amongst itself. It's very tribal in how people engage with podcasts. So other media you can listen to by mistake. You can walk into a supermarket and be hearing a radio station. You can walk in somewhere and see a TV channel. You don't listen to a podcast by accident. You don't trip and fall and go, oh, there's a podcast. It's really, really intentional. And anybody who's listening to podcasts, I, I'm, I'll make a prediction. Pull out your phone, look at the podcasts on your phone, and I would reckon the first two or three on there were the ones that were suggested to you when you joined up, and they said, hey, have you tried Serial, or hey, have you tried How I Built This? Half of the remaining ones will be friends who said, hey, try this. I know you, and I know what you'll like. And then the other, you know, the other half of that section would be things that you've actively sought out or searched for. And, and that's such a different space. You know, you, you, you're no longer saying, let's run an ad, put it on a network and tell the call center people to be on standby because there's going to be a surge of uh, business. It's not that. It's value adding content that people engage with deeply and intentionally. And I, I don't think we fully appreciate yet how significant that's going to play out over the next few years. But seeing something like this, the, the, the Easy Does It podcast, affirms that a group of people are hungry for knowledge around this but don't want to be sold something. They want to be informed about it so they can make a buying decision. And if you've done your job properly, you don't say in your podcast, hey, sign up and open an account. You go, you know, wherever you choose to invest, you should fund your account, make sure that you, you give people the information and leave them to make their judgments. And if you've done a good job, they should trust you and engage with you and, and, and spend money with you. And just adding to Gavin's point, when we developed the whole journey, uh, we looked at the digital marketing funnel. And when we approached Easy Does It, we were very clear with what we wanted to achieve. The first couple of months were supposed to be a pilot project, which means that we need the podcast to be known. We need people to know that Easy Equities is launching a new podcast. And the first funnel of the digital marketing um, approach is awareness. And that's what we wanted to drive. The long-term uh, target was the conversion. But for us to achieve that, you first need to look at the broad strategy, which is let us create the awareness. Let us see what are easy does its consumer trigger points that really draw in the audiences, right? Once we've established how big that audience is, um, the addressable audience size, then let us start driving some consideration towards the podcast. So whether it be through press play and listen to the podcast or some form of intent that will really drive the consumers to act onto the podcast first. And then once we've created the de demand, then we can look towards the end of the funnel, which is then driving the conversion metrics, getting people to sign up, people that haven't, that haven't feed good to sign up, getting people that are listening to, to our podcast to subscribe to our channel and get just weekly updates with every new episode that we launch. So we were very strategic with how we wanted to, 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 to start our journey as well as where we wanted to end our journey. And now we found ourselves in a very fortunate position where we are now looking at the conversion metrics of the journey and, you know, the numbers speak volumes. Well, one of the things that a lot of companies would ask is, how do you create that awareness? So I think Standware first said they had tried to do the podcast before working with Easy Does It, and it didn't work out so well. So 
you already had somewhere in your mind or Easy Equities had in your mind that you wanted to do podcasting. You had it in-house and it wasn't as successful until you partnered with Easy Does It. That's correct. So we had essentially just tried to do it, time constraints, um, and then these guys came up and saved us. Mm. So I think that's what's very important for other companies out there who are thinking of engaging with their stakeholders, that it's not such a simple thing just to, well, I think I'll do it in-house and I'll give it to our PR department and it'll all happen. It seems that there's a bit more to it than just that. Am I right? 100%. I think there's, there's definitely more. And I think, you know, one thing that links what Gav and Debojo were saying was everything they were saying all comes back to the content itself. So the content, we're not selling investing, we're not selling easy equities, we're telling stories of ordinary South Africans. So when we talk about the type of content we do, it's not always what is a stock. Sometimes it's why aren't you investing? What are the real reasons? As an ordinary South African, what is going on with you that is stopping you from from investing? It's the misconceptions about money. Those conversations lead us to the awareness. That what leads us to the conversions themselves. But everything is interlinked. And we have the type of relationship with, with the guys at Easy Equities where we have open discussions about those kind of things. We, we can't just only talk about conversions. We need to talk about the listeners, the, the, the content itself. Is the content landing right? And then we go back to the data and we look at the data. And sometimes businesses are just thinking, you know, we'll do the podcast with the hope of people opening accounts. You don't even know who the people are. You don't know their stories. You don't even know why they don't open accounts. Is it the fears? Is it, is, you, you know, so there's so much that needs to be done even before you record the podcast itself. And if I can add to that, a big criticism I have for, you know, businesses out there is that they really rigid about the kind of stories that they're telling. Yeah. And so they're only thinking, let me tell, you know, X, Y, Z story because a poll that we took out said this is the reason why. Whereas, you know, if you open it up to actual creators and actual storytellers to sort of leverage off of and help you tell that story, you'll realize that there's more nuance Mm. in what's preventing people from progressing in their kind of journey, you know, with you. And so that's that's kind of the trust that we sort of had with Teppo because he's a great storyteller and someone who can bring bring it all together. And so, yeah, I mean, just if businesses can just relax a little bit more and just like... That, that's an interesting thing you say there. We might be talking about conversions, but these are conversions over indeterminate periods of time. <laughs> so we do 30 podcasts now, and maybe somebody converts in June next year. How do you attribute? It's really, really hard. But hats off to whoever plucked up the courage to go, I know the C-suite says, what's the ROI? What's the conversion rate? Is this a good investment? You guys went ahead and did it anyway. And I think many of the people we speak to at uh, uh, Solid Gold are sitting in that position. They're saying, this doesn't look like something we're familiar with. First of all, it's not programmatic. Where's the spreadsheet where I just say, here's my budget, and it divides it and books it automatically? That, that's not there yet. It's not CPM. You, you're not going, well, what's your audience divide by 1,000 and there's five rand per? It, it's not that either. It's a real value proposition. It's a real, we are going to identify an audience or a tribe or a group of people and we're going to really engage with them and we're going to add value in the trust or the belief that over time they will spend money with us. But if they don't, well, that's still also okay. And that's a really hard sell. It's it's really hard to go to the C-suite and say, hey, can we have some budget to make a podcast series? And, you know, they ask the logical questions. How big's the audience? Don't know. What's expected conversion rate? Don't know. Um, What are the measures of success? How do we don't know yet? Yet it works. So how do we allay those fears of people listening to this and saying, well, podcast work for easy equities. Where was the leap of faith? What was the, the thing that you said? Well, it's worth trying. Well, I think it's a it's a cultural thing within the company. So they need to be agile enough. And it's, it's something that Easy Equities has been trying to embrace, you know, being agile. And so luckily, very fortunately, we had, you know, executives, the C-suite who are actually just went, okay, you know what, let's just give it a try. We're going to trust you guys and we're going to go for it and then see what the numbers say as we go along. And fortunately enough, it's it's been kind of a, it, it's been a success and we've sort of proven that. And to, to expand a bit further, there is no real formula because there are episodes which we didn't anticipate to have huge impact on the actual customer, but they did. And we just couldn't predict that. We just, you know, had it out, had a gut feel about it. And it did, for instance, Balesa's uh, Stockfell episode. And when you think about it, it makes sense. You know, Stockfell is a uniquely South African yeah. financial solution. We happen to play in that field. But it wasn't something that 
you know, we could put in a spreadsheet and say, we anticipate this episode and this conversation to have this much return on. It was just about faith like in that respect. Can, can I ask a, a tough question? <laughs> sure. Yes. What, what promises did you make? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, guys, this thing's going to do something. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, you, you know, what, what's very important is when we approached Easy Equities, we had a very firm idea of what we want to do. We knew that we wanted to create a podcast for the average person. So we, we didn't want jargon. We didn't want complications. We knew that we wanted the podcast to be part of the ecosystem of the business. Essentially, you cannot launch a podcast as a business and the podcast is external to the business. It has to be part and parcel of the business. Otherwise, it doesn't succeed. So we, we, we said to Easy Equities, yes, let's take a chance. We know who we want to talk to. We know that we want to convert them. But to convert them, we need to know who they are. What are their fears? What excites them? What do they want to learn about? So it means we need to do a lot of data. We need to read out data. We need to engage with, with, with the ordinary South Africans. And then we need to ensure that from a business point of view, they can actually find the podcast. The podcast can't be on Apple and it's far away from the business. We need to merge these two things and we merge them in a number of ways. Uh, we merge them by having open dialogue about the content, open dialogue about the marketing. We merge it in the sense that you, when you join Easy Equities as a customer, your, your customer journey, part of that journey is the podcast. So... Uh, I've just joined Easy Equities. I know nothing about investing. We actually have an episode on Investing 101. So you have to bridge that gap. And I think a lot of brands are struggling to bridge that gap. The moment they launch the podcast, they're really thinking about, can we get 10,000 conversions? No, you need to first bridge the gap. Then you can start to talk about the numbers. And I think that's what we have managed to get right. And um, also to add to that point, I think we need to think about COVID and what COVID has done to, to a lot of businesses. They've had to shift the way they present themselves in society. A lot of businesses are driving towards purpose, right? But what does purpose mean if you can't disrupt or act in culture in a purpose and meaningful world way that speaks to the consumer, right? And I think that's the first starting point is that when you think about launching a podcast, what is your reasoning behind launching a podcast, right? Is it part of the whole marketing ecosystem that you have set in place and what can it do to amplify your business. So as part of our strategy is that you can't think of a podcast as a medium that works alone. It needs to be supported and amplified by other pieces of your marketing strategy. So as part of our, our holistic plan, it was to make sure that the podcast serves and addresses the needs of not only the consumer from a point of view, but also the business point of view. And that's where the short term, the medium term and the long term goals come into play. And then you lay, you, you lay, those, you lay, you lay those ground rules from the get go to say short term, this is what we want to achieve. Medium term, this is what we want to achieve. Over the long run, this is what we want to achieve. Understanding how data works, especially in the digital work world, we know that you won't get immediate transactional immediate conversions they they work over time and businesses need to understand that if you're going to uh, apply a digital centric strategy or or, or or plan then you always know that your your marketing efforts are always determined by the data that you have in-house so we leveraged off of the mass data that easy equities has they've got a very big data then from there you start to then trim and fine tune your audiences and creating buckets of audiences where you start to really identify the addressable audience that you have that have a keen interest in the content that you're pushing out on the episode. Mm. So the collaboration between Youth Money Circle and Easy Equities, we meet every Friday to talk about the podcast. When is an episode launching? Why are we doing this particular episode? Why isn't Mark? We talk about every single aspect of the podcast. So at no point in time is Easy Equities unaware of what we're doing on the podcast. And we're not aware of what Easy Equities does because we're one in the same. So if something is happening internally at Easy Equities, it must show up on the podcast. And that's us bridging the gap. Okay, we've spoken a lot about that stakeholder, which is the consumer. But there's another stakeholder here, which is the people that you interview, the people that come onto your show and make it all happen. How do you produce a show? How do you say, well, out of all the financial people out there, whether it's property or stock fells or um, sh shares or stocks, you know, what makes you pick a particular person to come onto your podcast? 
<laughs> yeah, because that's a, an important stakeholder. Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful question. We we had a, a strategy session once about content, and Tandwa kept going on about storytelling, telling stories. So we're not there to tell people about investing. We're there to share stories about investing. It's a very big difference. So when we are thinking about what to talk about, we're already thinking about telling a story. Then we identify a person who can best tell that story because they've experienced that thing. And also then moving away and delivering content that is about people. And I'll give you a really great example. We can talk about what is an an EFT, what is an exchange traded fund, what is a stock, what is this, what is what is a company, all of that. But then we can talk about other things that relate to investing as well. So we can talk about a simple thing like traveling on a budget, right? You have to budget so that you can travel. And the reason you budget is that so you have more, more to invest in. So we're starting to now go into the spaces where we're talking about everything else that has to do with money, but nothing to do with investing because it all links up. Um, so having to develop that took us some time. So we choose people who are relatable, who are experts in their fields, who have gone through the motions, who we feel are a professional in their space. And then we, we basically have a discussion, um, Youth Money Circle and Easy Equity. We look at those individuals, we find them, we do a little bit of some research on them. And that's the criteria that we use. And I'd say the superb thing about the Easy Equities culture is that it's all about democratizing, let's say, financial access. But it's not just pure stock markets. Yeah. You also want to democratize knowledge and how people can leverage off of their own, I don't know, businesses, you know, you just, their own activities. We just want to make sure that everyone has access and that's sort of our culture. And so that's why we were able to just sort of develop a, a strategy that sort of touches on as many different fields as possible to actually tell a story to the listeners. Okay. I think I would like to sum up by asking each one of you, what is the future of podcasting for your respective area of business? Let's start with you, Standwa. For me, podcasting is the opportunity to change and shift cultures. And so brands that always want to be ahead or part of the culture or establish a culture, podcasting is sort of that allows them to have a strong voice in shifting and formulating a culture. Podcasting is it's, it's sort of the thing that allows brands to sort of bridge what they offer and their brand and uh, the culture that they want to be part of or establish. And there's nothing more honest and more like, uh, what would I say, more vulnerable and, and intimate than podcasting. So, yeah, it's, it's a space that I think brands should play in to become more real, actually. Tabuho? We look at how the world is shifting and, you know, consumers are, are evolving, meaning that media needs to and the businesses need to evolve with, with the consumers. If we look at that instance alone, we understand that in order for us to be alongside our consumers, we need to be active in that space at that given moment. It's a crucial time for businesses because they need to evolve with the consumers. They need to play a part in culture. And we talk about brand power, but when we look at brand power, we also need to look at the brand story. You know, you got to look at formats and platforms that will create that immersive world. And as part of your whole marketing ecosystem, podcast is, is the next big thing in, as part of your total marketing media mix. It will, it will serve brands justice and it will really help the brand to, 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 to have a deeper connection with their consumers and, and drive the narrative without forcing them on acting a certain way but by changing their mindset and their behavior in a very subtle way and manner that will really resonate and bring the consumers closer to the brands and the brands closer to the consumer. I, I definitely agree with, with Tandwa and, and, and Deboho. I will, I will speak about podcasting from an easy equities and youth money circle point of view. The idea with with a podcast and our podcast in particular is we want to tell the story of easy equities and we want our listeners to have a chapter in that story. The idea is when you're listening to the podcast, you have a place. You are a part of it. We're telling your story. And when we tell your story, we can then influence you to do certain things. And ultimately, we want you to take control of your finances. So a business needs to go back and say, who are we? 
what is our story and the podcast should tell that story and your customers need to have a chapter in that story how you do it is the difficult part that's where the creatives at youth money circle come in uh that's where mm. people who are passionate about your product your business your industry come in those are the people that need to be leading the podcast itself uh, so yeah that's how i would like to frame podcasting for us as as two businesses and generally how i see it for the world makes a lot of sense and finally gavin spoken word is part of being human i think we've been human for about 200,000 years and for all but the last few thousand the way we stored history the way we shared knowledge was always oral it was always spoken word this this ability to read and write is fairly new with the handset and some of the new changes that came in the last 15 years it used to be quite hard to deliver audio to to people on the on the go now it's quite easy and podcasting is sitting at the front of that but also in that same space we're seeing audiobooks we're seeing an explosion in spoken word content audiobooks podcasts uh, advertorial, all sorts of uh, spoken word content. And I think there's something instinctive, there's something primal about us that says, I like hearing stories, I like telling stories rather than reading. And, and I think we're, we're sitting at the precipice of the next explosion that was a lot like the internet in 1994-95. Google have made spoken word search a priority. If you aren't producing spoken word content, two, three years from now, you're not going to be on the search results page. You're just going to be left off that page because they're delivering spoken word content close to the top of an SRP now. That's hugely significant. Amazon sold more audiobooks than eBooks in 2020, and that's not going to go backwards. That's going to continue. That gap is going to widen. Amazon are currently hiring more people to work in their voice division than Google has in their voice division. That's a retailer is getting into spoken word. That, that's interesting. Uh, more and more, the spoken word is going to be the, the way people engage with content. It's hard to believe, but I think we're moving away from screens on our devices. You know, we're, we're concerned about screen time, but there's something nice about just getting in your car and saying, hey, Google, play me a podcast or can resume the podcast I was listening to earlier. There's a difference between a search that says, hey, Google flights to London versus... You know, and it's, if you type that search, you're getting very search SRP, uh, SEO results. But if you use conversational language, hey, Google, what's the best way for me to go? Where's the best place to go on holiday? Hey, we've got a podcast talking about holidays in London, and I know you like fishing. Do you want to listen to this podcast? You're not even touching your device. You're speaking to the, to the device. It's playing stuff back to you. That's a very, very different style of engagement. So you can't just take your team who has done SEO and written articles and, and put PDFs on your website and say, hey, make a podcast. It's not, it's not the same thing. Uh, it's incredibly exciting for me. Yeah, definitely an exciting space. So we've just heard firsthand from Youth Money Circle and Easy Equities how easy and how provable it is to use podcasting to connect with stakeholders and to grow your business. Are you ready to use this powerful media for your business? Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> thanks, me. Thanks, thank Vanessa. you. Thank you, Vanessa. Everybody, thanks a lot. You've been listening to another production from Solid Gold Podcasts.